Customs of the Tagalog by Juan de Placencia, presented by Group 5. In this video discussion, we will travel back in time to be discover one of the essential part of our Philippine history. We will also about to tackle the life of the native Filipinos before colonization and explain the contribution of these sources in Philippine history. Background of the Water 1520 to 1590 Juan de Placencia was born in the early 16th century as Juan Porto Carrero in Placencia in the region of Extremadura, Spain. He was a Spanish prior of the Franciscan Order. He was among the first group of Franciscan missionaries who arrived in the island on July 2, 1578. He was one of the seven children of Pedro Porto Carrero, a captain of a Spanish schooner. He spent most of his missionary life in the Philippines, where he founded numerous towns in Luzon and authored several religious and linguistic books most notably the Doctrina Cristina, Christian Doctrine, the first book ever printed in the Philippines. As soon as he arrived, he joined with another missionary, Pray Diego de Oropesa, and they both started preaching around Laguna de Bay and Tayabas, Quezon, in Quezon province, where he founded several towns. Juan de Placencia passed away in Liliu, Laguna, in the year of 1590. Historical background of document documentary film Through Magellan Expedition, the archipelago was discovered. Naming of Las Islas Filipinas by the Villalobos Expedition. Custom of Tagalogs was written on the year 1589 during the Spanish colonial period. Juan de Placencia's portrayal of customs of Tagalogs was inspired by his missionary work in the Philippines. Francisco Alcino was assigned in the Visayas, and Juan de Placencia was set in the Tagalog region. He wrote about the culture and society of the people in the zone, which is why such a thing was created. He gathered the elder men and those with the greatest capacity among the Indians from various neighborhoods. Through letter, the king of Spain tasked Juan de Palencia to document the customs, traditions of the colonized natives based on his observation and judgment. Customs of Tagalog is a portion of broader monographs that were written by the Chronicles of Spanish Expeditions to the Philippines in the early 16th and 17th centuries. The customs of the Tagalog were deliberately written to give an eroticized portrait of the Tagalog's indigenous people, which was probably influenced by politics and propaganda. Placencia was able to record information in this document on social classes, style of dress, ornamentation, the organization of monarchy and the legal system, slave ownership, inheritance customs, marriage customs, religious and superstitious beliefs, economics, and language. Content and contextual analysis of the important historical information found in the document or film. Leadership, marriage, religion, and other beliefs. The account was able to describe the governing system of native Filipinos at that time, led by Adatu. He is also the captain in their wars. The Datu's executive function includes implementing laws, ensuring peace and order in the barangay, and giving protection to his subjects. He governed between 30 to 100 families. The tribal gathering in Tagalog is called the Barangay. Natives inferred that the reason for giving themselves this name aroused from the boat as they reached this land. The primary account included a detailed description of the caste system within the Barangay consisting of the three social classes, nobles, commoners, and slaves. A 
as well as their function and limitation within and outside of the barangay. In terms of dowries and marriage between individuals of the same and different social class, rules and customs were also heavily described. The male usually gives dowries to the parents of the female. Placentia's account also presented rules in terms of dowries in case of divorce. The primary source thoroughly discussed the division of children between spouses or two different barangay if the couple came from different barangays. It contains a comprehensive record of the rules in assigning a child social status depending on the parent's status. The account provided information about the worship of Tagalogs. They used drums which beat the feast and during this time, the barangay of family unite to worship which they called Nag-aanitos. The Tagalog also have series of idols whom they worship for particular settings. Badhala means signify all-powerful or maker of all things which they worship the most. They tend to look at omens at what they encounter and also practice divination to show their luck. The account was able to indicate that the natives have no established division of years, months, and days. Only the recognition of sun time and water time. Determine time through land, cultivation by face of the moon, seasons of fruits, flowers, and leaves they are yielding. The Tagalogs also have a manner in adoration, offering, and sacrifice depicted in the document. There is a proclamation of feast and offering to the devil of what they had to eat. Adoration is done in front of an idol, which they anoint with fragrant oil from musk, civet, or gum and aromatic woods. The Tagalogs have an officiating priest or priestess do the poetic singing and responding people, the Catalonian. Ray Placencia was also able to include the distinctions of devils found in Luzon. Placencia also described the superstitious beliefs and supernatural beings of the native Tagalogs in detail. The manner of burying was discussed in depth in the document stated that the manner of burial for a chief is different from of the deceased warrior. The form of burial of the eaters or negrillos was also stated. Discuss the idea of life after the rest of the native Tagalogs. Maker or paradise for who just, valiant, morally upright, and virtuous. Kasanan or place of punishment, grief, and affliction. A place of anguish for the wicked with the devil called Satan. Asensia's account is mainly descriptive since it was supposed to illustrate the daily lives of the Tagalogs. The original work itself is a product of observations and judgments. Therefore, it is probable that Juan de Placencia's work might contain partiality in presenting his observations and assessments. Contribution and relevance of the document in understanding the grand narrative of Philippine history. The customs of the Tagalogs enabled the exploration of the ancient lives of the people living in central Luzon. It just like any other colonial texts written during the Spanish colonial period, was intentionally made to provide an exoticized description of the Tagalog natives. It has continued to serve as a basis for historical reconstructions of Tagalog society. The information provided in the text gave vivid imagery, which allowed for further analysis of the practices of the ancient Tagalogs and comparisons with other accounts of succeeding periods and significant events in Philippine history. The account aids in realizing that mastery of the local language and culture led to the success of Christianity in the Philippines. Juan de Placencia's work made the Filipinos realize how unique the Tagalog culture was before colonization. He used his work to inform the Filipinos about the differences and the similarities of our culture by then and now. Contains detailed information on exciting topics such as customs, traditions, religious and superstitious beliefs. 
It primarily depicts the prevailing system of the Filipinos during the pre-Hispanic time. It can be inferred that many of the 16th century beliefs and practices are still present and observed today. It affirms that during the pre-Hispanic period, Filipinos already have a government and a set of beliefs and practices. The Barangay still serves as the smallest unit of government in our country today, which is also led by Barangay captains equivalent to Datis in the past. Disprove the claim of some Spaniards that locals were uncivilized and lacking in culture. As it provided an elaborate observation on functioning government, tax system, the criminal justice system, indigenous calendar, and long-standing customs and traditions, such as garments, gold ornaments, houses, and idols that are comparable to Southeast Asian civilization and culture. 